Chapter 3 Millie Molly Mandy Meets Her Great Aunt Once upon a time, one fine evening, Millie Molly Mandy and her father and mother and grandpa and grandma and uncle and auntie were all sitting at supper. There was bread and butter and cheese for the grown ups and bread and milk for Millie Molly Mandy and baked apples and cocoa for them all. When suddenly there came a loud bang, bang on the knocker. Run, Milly Molly Mandy, said Mother, that sounds like the postman. So Milly Molly Mandy jumped down from her chair in a great hurry and fetched the letter, which was for Mother. Then she climbed on her chair again and everyone looked interested while Mother opened it. It was from someone who called Milly Molly Mandy's mother Dear Polly and was to ask if that someone might spend a few days with them and it finished up your affectionate Aunt Margaret. Father and mother and grandpa and grandma and uncle and auntie were quite pleased. And Millie Molly Mandy was pleased too, although she did not know who it was until grandma said to her, it is my sister Margaret, your great auntie who is coming. Then Millie Molly Mandy was very interested indeed. Is she my great auntie and your sister too? She asked Grandma. Yes, and she's my sister-in-law, said Grandpa. And my auntie, said Mother. And my auntie-in-law, said Father. And my auntie-in-law too, said Auntie. And my auntie, said Uncle. Fancy, said Millie Molly Mandy. She's all that. And she's a great auntie too. I would like to see her. The next day, Millie Molly Mandy helped Mother make up the spare room bed. Oh, I wish the spare room were a little bigger, said Mother. And Millie Molly Mandy looked around gravely and thought it really was rather small for a great auntie. But she went and fetched some marigolds from her own little garden and put them in a vase on the chest of drawers, for she knew there was lots of room for love even if there was not much for great aunties. Then Millie Molly Mandy helped father bring the big armchair out of the best parlour into the room where they always sat. Millie Molly Mandy was glad it was such a big chair. It really looked quite large enough, even for a great auntie. Then mother cooked some big fruit cakes and some little seed cakes and some sponge cakes and a whole lot of other things. And Millie Molly Mandy, who helped to clean up the cooking bowls and spoons, supposed a great auntie must take quite a lot of feeding. As soon as ever the last bowl was scraped, Millie Molly Mandy ran down the road to tell little friend Susan the news. Little friend Susan was walking on the wall, but she jumped, she jumped down as soon as she saw Millie Molly Mandy. Oh, Susan, said Millie Molly Mandy, you know my auntie. Yes said little friend Susan. Well, said Millie Molly Mandy, she's just a usual auntie, but I've got a great auntie coming to stay with us. Little friend Susan, being a best friend, was just as interested as Millie Molly Mandy, and it was soon settled that next morning she should come and play in Millie Molly Mandy's garden so that she might see great auntie Margaret for herself. Then Millie Molly Mandy ran back home to dinner. After dinner, Mother and Grandma and Auntie and Millie Molly Mandy hurried through the washing up and tidied the cottage while Father put the pony in the trap, and then they changed their dresses while Father drove to the station. And then Millie Molly Mandy, in her clean frock, kept running to the gate to see if the pony trap were in sight yet. And at last it was, and Millie Molly Mandy was so excited that she raced into the cottage and jumped up and down, and then she ran out to the gate again and opened it wide. The pony trotted up to the gate and stopped, and Father got down first, and then he took down Great Auntie Margaret's great basket, and then he helped Great Auntie Margaret her own self. And what do you think Great Auntie Margaret was like? She was a little, little white-haired lady in a black bonnet and dress spotted with little mauve flowers, and she had a kind little face with pink cheeks. Millie Molly Mandy was so surprised it was all she could do to mind her manners and not stare. 
Great Auntie Margaret was soon seated in the great armchair, and instead of filling it as Milly Molly Mandy had expected, why, there was heaps of room for Milly Molly Mandy there too. And instead of eating up all the big fruit cakes and the little seed cakes and the sponge cakes and other things, there were lots for everybody in the family, including Milly Molly Mandy. And as for the spare room being too small, it looked almost big because Great Auntie Margaret was such a little lady. When Great Auntie Margaret saw the flowers on her chest of drawers, she said gently, Why, Millicent Margaret Amanda, I believe that is your doing. Thank you, my dearie. Oh, Great Auntie Margaret, said Millie Molly Mandy, reaching to kiss her again. I do like you. Would you mind if I showed you to Susan this evening, instead of making her wait till tomorrow? <laughs>